Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley if you're new here and in this video we're going to be doing a little bit of an April update. I have wanted to film this video for a little bit now um, but the end of last month we were in a car accident and so last week I was not able to film. Thankfully we're all okay. It just you know shook us up a little bit. We had to get a new car. It was not very fun um, but I, all that matters is that we're all okay, and so I am back to filming this week, and I am excited to update you guys on how homeschool went for the month of April. So I think today should be a relatively quick update. I don't have anything too huge to talk about this month, where I feel like most months I had like a huge update for you guys, uh, whether we were adding in a new curriculum or that sort of thing. But this month, uh, I feel like it was one of our more um, productive, uh, consistent months, which was exciting. We have never actually fallen into like a Monday through Thursday rhythm or like a very, very consistent schedule in the sense that I know exactly what to expect every day. Every day is just a little bit different. Um, I always think like one change and then, oh, this will work for good but it doesn't. Um, I think that's just the nature of homeschooling with a baby and a toddler, and um, it just kind of is what it is. I've just learned to accept it. I kind of mentioned that a little bit in my video about the best and the worst things about homeschooling, and a lot of you guys seemed to agree with that, that things change constantly and that you just kind of have to be okay with it. So that makes me feel better that at least I'm not alone in not being like disciplined enough to just do exactly the same thing every day. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll just start you off with an update on my kindergartner. We are, technically I'm filming this the first week of May. So I'm trying to decide if I wanna add in this week's or save it for the May update, but we are getting pretty close to finishing our um, kindergarten curriculum. I think in my last update video, I shared that we did finish or we were just about, I think, going to finish with our math curriculum. Um, so we're doing the Good and the Beautiful Math, for those of you who don't know. And this month we did start on um, the Good and the Beautiful Math 1. I ordered the math box from the Good and the Beautiful, which they changed. Um, it's no longer wooden, and some of the pieces, I think, are a little bit different. Um, I kind of like the older boxes better, but there's really not a huge difference or anything. Um, and the update that I will say is we finished, I think, lesson seven today. So we're only like the second week into it. And uh, it's definitely more challenging than the kindergarten math, which I was kind of surprised because when I first flipped through the book, I didn't think it would look too different from the kindergarten um, book. But I will say that my, my son is definitely um, a bit more challenged and, and we're having a bit more like meltdowns and... Um, it's nothing that he can't do, so I'm not entirely sure what it is. I think what, it, I think actually what it is, is that I think it's, their lessons are just a little bit longer, and I think the kindergarten lessons were kind of, like, perfect for him, and so, um, them just being a little bit longer sometimes just pushes him a bit more. I probably should maybe just do a bit more breaks for him, but it can be really challenging because of my one-year-old, and I usually just kind of want to get through as much as possible and I probably push him a bit too much so I probably should try not to do that try to give him a bit more breaks so that he doesn't become overwhelmed um so that's our math update for our um language arts we are also doing the good and the beautiful and we are currently 15 lessons away from finishing which is super exciting um he's getting really close to finishing his booster cards which is fun um, so I'm printing out the Booster B cards so that he can start those when he does finish. He is on, like, the last three cards, and then they usually do a review. So once he's through with the review, I think it will be, like, he'll be very close to the same finishing, like, the book and the Booster cards around the same. He's been tracking with them about the same the whole year, so that doesn't surprise me too much. Um, the ending is a bit challenging because they have been adding in a whole bunch of new things, um, pretty quickly. So he is having to like slow down and try to learn them all at the same time. Oh, and one more thing that I wanted to update you on, I almost forgot to add this in here to the language arts part, um, is that I 
think I have fully decided to not do all about reading. Um, I am going to do a video on all about reading versus the good and the beautiful because I got some requests for that and I like doing that sort of thing. Uh, it's I guess a little bit different since I didn't fully do all about reading but I have a very good idea of how the curriculum works and so I feel like I definitely could do the video and just explain the differences and why I prefer uh, The Good and the Beautiful over All About Reading, which will be an interesting um, take on it since I feel like all the videos are kind of opposite. So uh, I definitely want to do that, but I want to prepare well for it so that the video is includes as much as possible. But I decided not to do All About Reading just because I think it's just too much. Um, the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts is, the, the lessons are pretty simple, um, but because he does 10 minutes of reading in his booster cards and then he does the workbook, um, language arts has always been just the more challenging subject for him. And so I just don't find, I just don't see any time to like throw it in. Like I really want to finish our curriculum that we're already doing and he, it's already, he's learning that way. So currently as it stands, I don't think we need it. But like I mentioned, we are getting a bit of attitude and like pushback. So if that continues, maybe I'll consider uh, switching. But as of right now, the way that it is, um, I don't think we're going to do it. And so I'm a little bit surprised to say that. Um, I reserve my right to change my mind. Um, I also may use it with a younger child because I do see that it could be a better fit for certain kids. So um, I just think my oldest, it's just the good and the beautiful works really well for him and it works well for me. So that's what we're going to stick with through the rest of the year. That's our language arts update. I don't know if it's just that like we're towards the end of the year now and it's really nice outside and my son just wants to go do fun things and doesn't want to sit for school, but he's been giving me a lot harder of a time to sit down and do school lately, um, especially after we've had a break. I think I've talked about this before, but it's really hard to get him back into the swing of things. He like really pushes back, he gives me attitude, he doesn't like want to do school. Um, but yeah, I think that probably has something to do with it being really nice out and he probably wants to go do fun things. So we're working through that. <laughs> um, we're all being sanctified in the process because it is definitely challenging sometimes. So uh, another thing I will update you guys on is uh, I would say sunlight and gather round are kind of the same. We are I realized why we were not making as much progress with sunlight as I wanted and that was because we had been slowly working our way through some chapter books. We did um, the third book in the Mouse of the Motorcycle series and then now we just finished one of the Henry Huggins uh, series called Henry uh, and the Clubhouse and that's another Beverly Cleary that she wrote all of those books. Um, and so. I didn't quite realize that I was like trying to do like a read aloud and then also try to read sunlight books and then do school with my three-year-old and my five-year-old while also having a one-year-old. It kind of hit me today that I'm like, oh, well, that's why we weren't doing sunlight books as much is because we were reading the chapter book and that should be like obvious, but I don't know. I just like think that I can do a lot more than I can, I guess, just because I kind of forget how much work <laughs> three small children are. Uh, so now that we finished Henry and at the clubhouse or Henry and the clubhouse, we have been reading more consistently the sunlight books. So that's been exciting. Um, I'm not sure that we're gonna finish like I had wanted to at the end of this year. Although technically, I kind of had the idea that we could finish them next year too because we had combined the first two sunlight programs together and we were kind of just doing them together. And so. We could definitely continue that next year because we're not going to do the third level of sunlight until my middle son is in kindergarten, which should be not this coming school year, but the year after that. So we still have a whole school year where we can read the first two levels. I also was considering doing a build your library um, level. Uh, I might have mentioned that in my last video. I can't remember, but... I'm considering doing that, that's like a, around the world, but then Sunlight has that for the kindergarten. So I don't know if it would be too much of the same, but it's really just reading books. So I thought maybe we'll just get through the Sunlight and then we'll add that on because they're not very expensive books either. And so 
I figured it definitely can't hurt and it's exciting to learn that way. So I'm thinking of doing that. I'm also thinking of doing not grass history. I'm thinking of doing um, the 50 states study. And I honestly am being a little bit crazy and thinking I might combine the Build Your Library with the 50 states study because it, again, it's just like a lot of reading and I my son really likes learning about stuff like that. So I think it could be fun, but I'm still thinking about it. I might make a video about what I'm thinking about for next year. I haven't fully decided on that. Let me know if that would be interesting to you or not. Um, but that's my update on my kindergartner. And then for my for my three-year-old, uh, we have been trucking along through the Good and the Beautiful preschool. I think we made it to letter K, which we definitely won't finish um, because I we're not going to be going all throughout the summer. Um, and then come next year, I wanted to start, which I've said a hundred times, so you guys probably already know, but the uh, Gather Round Letters and Numbers series, I really like that one. So I haven't fully figured out what we're going to do with the rest of the book because I kind of hate the idea of not finishing but I'm probably just gonna have to suck it up and just not finish it um or I've been trying to do like two lessons when we sit down because he he does want to keep going it's like they're very short lessons and I'm not putting any pressure on him to like remember anything we're just kind of going through it at his pace and so we'll see we'll see how that goes um I am considering schooling into June since if we stay on track for the rest of this month and not take any more breaks, we will finish at the very end of May. So I am considering slowly working through June, just like very slowly, like at our leisure, like when we feel like we're, we have a home day and we want to like do some stuff, we can like sit down and do some school. Because I kind of like the idea of being a little bit ahead each year so that like there just feels like so much less pressure that if things happen or whatever the case is so then it will feel like maybe we're not as much behind because we were already ahead so that's the plan but I also like I said we have been fighting some attitudes and I suspect maybe we will need a break so I'm not sure if that's what we'll end up doing or not um but I can't believe that we're getting to the end of the school year it feels just so crazy like the school year was really long, I feel like, compared to the first year, um, although I did start late last year because I had a baby in the beginning of the year, so yeah, I just kind of can't believe that we're almost at the end of it already. So the last little thing that I want to talk about is just um, our like playgroup co-op situation. I really would like to hear from you guys if you guys um, attend a co-op and like how old your kids are. Um, because I was very loosely debating um, joining a co-op. We still do meet with our playgroup friends. So for those of you who don't know, we meet with three other moms who have kids who are six and under and we just let the kids play and we just hang out and talk like it's not structured at all, which I really enjoy because I, I really like that it fosters friendship in a way where it's easier to make friends when you can just talk to them and play with them how you want to play with them versus having something really structured. So I think it could just take longer to make friends that way. So I like that a lot. We still are doing that. I am pretty sure we'll probably do that next year as long as everyone is still up for it, which I think they will be. Um, and so I don't feel like yet we need a co-op just because our kids are so young and um, my kids specifically don't really ask to be around friends more than they already are where I feel like if they were asking then I would maybe think about doing something like that but I just feel like right now with my youngest still being one next year she'll be, have just turned two at the beginning of the year so I feel like I need to give her the space still to like nap and um, that sort of thing so I think in the coming years maybe we'll join a co-op but um, I don't know. It's just, they're so long at this age that I feel like it's just too soon. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that if you guys uh, do a co-op or not. So that is uh, all that I have for you. Like I said, it was kind of a short uh, video today. I think that this was our most productive month so far. Maybe like there was one other month that it felt kind of like 
we got things done. There wasn't a lot of um, distractions and that sort of thing. So that was nice and a welcomed uh, change. And I just wanted to thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And I will see you in the next one.